boys and girls, let me tell you something. I can tell you how to make camp very memorable for mum and daddy. If you've got watches on, you wake up at three in the morning and go and tell mummy and daddy you need to go to the bathroom. You remember that? <laughs> They'll all come and thank me tomorrow morning for that, I'm sure. Many years ago, in Canada, there was an eagle that was so big that the zoo wanted to catch it. And he was a magnificent eagle. Try it again. This is really exciting, isn't it? <laughs> okay, just hit it for me, guys. And this eagle lived way out. Doesn't he look fierce? He lived way out in a valley with a big mountain on one side. It was called the Canadian Rockies. And the zoo people said, we will give $5,000 to anybody who can catch that eagle and bring it here to the zoo. Well, all the best hunters in Canada, they went rushing out to that valley. But every time the eagle saw them, he's a very shy eagle. This. You know why he was a shy eagle? Because he was called a bald eagle. And uh, let's go, uh, here he is. Doesn't he look fierce? And every time he saw the hunters, he would open his great big wings and he would go up and up, next one, and up, we're going backwards. And again, into the air, and he would go up so high until he was just as big as your little finger. And you can't catch an eagle when he's that high up in the air. And for years they tried to catch him. Uh, yeah, a plane can catch him, but it would sort of do a bit of damage, wouldn't it? <laughs> and then one day, an old Indian man, he came to the zoo and he knocked on the door. They let him in. He walked past the rhinoceroses. He ignored the elephant. He didn't even look at the lions. And the crocodiles, he couldn't care less until he came to a door that said, manager, and he knocked on that door. And the manager said, come in. And he opened the door and he said, hello, Grandpa, what can we do for you today? And the old man looked at him and he said, will you give me $5,000 if I can catch the eagle? <laughs> Grandpa, if you can catch that eagle, I will give you $10,000. Well, okay. And he went out. He walked past the Hello. crocodiles and he walked past the and he walked past the and he walked past the yes, and he went out the gate. And he got in the train and he went way out to the valley. He looked up there and he walked in and all he had was a big stick, a walking stick. And when he got to the bottom of the cliff, the eagle looked at him, opened his wings, and he jumped off and he went up and up and up until he was just as big as my little finger. The old man didn't bother. He just climbed up slowly up the cliff until he got to the eagle's nest and he got the stick and he laid it down right next to the nest. He climbed down, he walked away, got into a train and went home. And the eagle, look at him flying around and he saw that there was something strange next to his nest. He didn't go near it for one week. And finally, after a long time, he landed in a tree next one and he looked down and he watched it for days he looked 
and when he saw that the stick wasn't moving, he flew past the nest. And he went back. And then he landed near the nest and he looked and he looked at the stick. Did the stick move? No. Finally, he got back in the nest and his wings were ready to take off and he looked at the stick. And then he relaxed. Ah, oh, that stick wasn't going to hurt me. And then one day the old man came back and the eagle went up and up and up in the air until he was as big as my little finger. And he was carrying another stick and he climbed all the way up and he put the stick next to the other one. And he went away. And this time the eagle, he only stayed away for two days and he thought, this man's silly. He had a good look. Was the stick going to hurt him? No. And he sat in the nest. This time the old man came back in just another day and he climbed up with another stick and he put it next to another stick. And this time the eagle only flew as far as the tree and sat there and looked. And when he was gone, only halfway down, he had a look, ah, oh, yeah, that's all right. And he got back in the nest. And every day, the old man came back with another stick. And he started to build a nice little house around the nest. I might call it a house, and the eagle might call it a house, but you would call it a trap. trap. But the eagle didn't know because he got used to the sticks. And the old man was so kind because when he built the walls and the eagle had to sit like this to look over the top, he started to build a roof. Just a roof like that. And the roof was held up by one stick. And the eagle thought it was lovely because he had this lovely warm place and the wind wasn't ruffling his feathers. And finally the old man came back and he was not carrying a stick. He was carrying a very long ball of string. And he climbed up and he tied the string to the stick that was holding the roof. And he went all the way and he looked. And the eagle thought, okay, hopped in the nest, ruffled his feathers, settled down. And the old man, he just tugged the string like that. Bang! The roof fell down. And the eagle flew up and bumped his head. He was angry and screaming. And the old man went, and two of his friends came along with a big bag. And they climbed up. And they got the eagle, and they stuffed him in the bag, and they took him off to the zoo. He went in the front gate. He didn't look at the... He ignored the... He walked right past... And he didn't even think about the... And he went to the door that said... And he knocked. Come in. Oh, hello, Grandpa. What have you got in that bag? And the old man said... Would you give me $10,000? Oh, yes. You look at the next picture as it comes up. If you look at that eagle, you can see there's not sky behind him. There are actually bars. He was put in this big cage, and he was very, very unhappy. Next picture. Can you see him there? Does he look happy? All day, he would sit up right up the very top on a top branch, and he was always looking in one direction. What direction do you think that was? Home, and he couldn't get there. Next picture. Boys and girls, that's a picture of the actual cage that he lived in. And if you look very closely, you can see he's right up on the very top branch. But you know what happened? One day, or should I say one night, somebody crept in 
with a pair of wire cutters and cut the wires and the eagle escaped. Good. <laughs> and he flew home and they never, ever caught him again. You know, the devil's like that. He sets a trap for us. And at first we're very frightened. And then we get used to him. And then we were not expecting it. Bang, goes the trap. But Jesus loves us so much. He made a way for us to escape. Now, I want to tell a story this morning about a man who escaped from the devil. And I need you people just to move out a little bit because I'm going to use, this is a house, you think it's a piece of cardboard. And I've got two helpers down there who are going to come up and, and hold the walls of the house. Can you kids there just move back a little bit? And this man was called Paul. Thank you, Pastor Stanley. Look after my house. I'm a master builder. You know, Paul, he used to preach about Jesus and the people who didn't like to hear about Jesus used to do horrible things. They would beat him up. He was left outside the city for dead. They threw rocks at him, hit him with, with sticks. And finally he went to a city called Corinth, which was a very wicked city. And when he started to preach in the church, some of them would cover their ears and say, we don't want to hear about Jesus. And finally, they got him and they threw him out. They said, you will not come into this church. And he shook his coat. Whoops, I've just lost everything. One of my ears didn't come off. Can, ooh. Can you hear me now? Good. He shook his coat and his microphone never fell off. And he left and he went outside and he thought, where am I going to go? And the man in the house next door said, I'm a Christian. You can live in my house. It's right next to the synagogue. And so he did. Excuse me, Chester. Now, you might think this is a cardboard box, but I'm going to draw a window. And here is the window. And you know, sometimes in Corinth, can you see Paul there in the window? Well, we better do something about that. Hands on heads. Oh, I love the raw power of a teacher. You just go a little bit over there, keep your hands on your heads because I'm using a sharp knife and I'm allowed to use it, but you're not. But we have to make a window. So do you want to see inside? Well, let's see what we can do here. Cut the window. If you're in there, Paul, I hope you're standing back this morning. And cut a window here. On here. Now, shall I open the window? Let's open the window. Say hello, Paul. Hello, everybody. Well, you know, when the people in the synagogue tried to preach, and I need my Bible here so I can preach. Every time the ruler of the synagogue, the senior elder, started to preach, Paul started to preach as well through the window. Paul In fact, we better. Christ Jesus called to be an apostle. And every time I tried to talk, he was preaching through the window. And the people weren't listening to me, they were listening to him. And poor old Christmas. He said, what's going to happen? Every time I preach, this man, Paul, starts preaching through the window. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets, the Holy Spirit. And finally, Christmas stopped preaching 
and he started to listen. And you know what happened? One day he stood up in the synagogue and I think Paul was listening and he said, I have been listening to Paul preaching through the window and he talks about Jesus and I hated Jesus but every Sabbath he talks about Jesus and I have to say to you congregation that I believe that Jesus is our saviour and our God and I have decided my wife has decided and all my children have decided that we will follow Jesus because Paul was preaching through the window right next door. And so he left and he used to go and listen to Paul and they got a new elder and his name was Sosthenes and he hated Jesus. He hated Paul and finally he decided that he was going to take Paul to the court and he did. And the judge was sitting there and his name was Gallio. He was the Roman proconsul. That means he was very important and he wanted to make sure that they followed the Roman law. He looked at Paul and Paul started to stand up and he wanted to talk about Jesus and Gallio said, stop, stop. He said, I am hearing that you are charging Paul that he is upsetting your traditions and your religion but I don't care about that. I'm only interested in the Roman law. Let him preach. Get out of my court. Sosthenes, get out. All the people get out. And they did. And they were so angry. And this is in Acts chapter 18, folk. That when they got Sosthenes outside, they were so angry they got sticks and stones and their fists and they beat him up the leader of the synagogue and he was taken home a very very sick man now the Bible doesn't say what happened next but I'm going to tell you what I think happened I think that night Paul went to Sosthenes house and knocked on the door and Sosthenes wouldn't have opened the door. He would have been in bed feeling very, very sore. And maybe Mrs. Sosthenes came to the door and she, who did she see? It was Paul. What do you want? And he said, I've come to see Sosthenes. Really? And he stepped in and he followed her through the house and there was Sosthenes lying on the bed. Do you think that Paul might have got his fist and punched him? No, he didn't. I think he knelt down next to his bed and put his arms around him and said, Brother Sosthenes, you are very sore. You have been beaten today and I know what it's like. I've been beaten many times for Jesus. And I think that in your heart you know that Jesus is correct and that Jesus loves you. Because I used to hate Jesus. I used to kill people who didn't like, who, who, who followed Jesus. And I want to pray for you because I believe that God wants you even though you've been beaten. You know why I tell this story? Because there is a strange little verse that Paul wrote after he left Corinthians, after he left Corinth, he wrote a letter. And it's called in our Bible, 1 Corinthians. And if you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 1, there's these beautiful words. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes. The Bible tells us that Sosthenes became converted. You know, God has a strange way, boys and girls, of making good things out of bad. Mums and dads, we heard the most wonderful sermon yesterday from Pastor Brad Thorpe. And long after you have forgotten the details of his sermon, you will remember the story of the old couple, the McGees, who took in his grandmother. 
and his father as a little boy. Out of a terrible tragedy when he lost his grandfather came something that today we call Hope Channel. They had no idea that from a tragedy God was going to bring so much good. And here was a man called Sosthenes in the Bible who hated Jesus, was beaten up by his own people, but God was waiting to soften his heart. And boys and girls, as you grow up, things will happen to you that are sometimes very difficult to explain. But if you keep your hand holding Jesus, he will always have a way of making good out of that in the long run. And mums and dads, you know what I mean. We're going to pray. Let's shut our eyes. We'll have a little prayer together. Shut your eyes, boys and girls. Dear Jesus, as we've heard the story of Sosthenes this morning, we think of our own lives when unfortunate things can happen. We can lose a loved one, but we just pray that we'll continue to have faith in you because you know history from beginning to end and you love us so much you can make good things come from bad occasions. And like the old man and the eagle, even though we may be trapped, you always look for a way to open that trap and to let us escape. Boys and girls and mums and dads, it'll be a wonderful day when Jesus comes and we pray that we'll all be ready to meet him because we ask it in the name of your precious son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. Thank you, helpers. Thank you, Paul. You can have that.